So basically what we're going to do in the lab is we're going to charge the capacitor and then discharge the capacitor and we will get the charging graph and the discharge graph. Let's go do it. So before I show you the circuit, uh, go to the table, you will have to note down the value of the resistance which is 100 kilo ohms uh, the value of the capacitance which is 100 microfarad and the battery potential which we can find out just in a second for a resistance capacitance circuit there is a very important constant called the time constant the time constant is just the product of resistance and capacitance and in this case because we're using 100 microfarad and 100 kilo ohms when you take the product you will get 10 seconds so the time constant of this circuit is 10 seconds which you will have to enter in the table now here is the circuit that you are seeing uh, we have the resistance connected here 100 kilo ohms you have the 100 microfarad capacitor connected to it in series this cable goes all the way from uh, S6 to S5 and then another cable to the negative of the battery. From the positive of the battery you have a cable that goes to SW1 and from SW2 there is a long cable that goes to uh, C8 or S8 because these two are the same. That's how the circuit is completed so when the switch is pressed down the current flows through the switch through this cable through the resistance it charges the capacitor and back through the battery the circuit is completed also notice that there is another cable that's connected to sw2 but its other end is not connected anywhere you can see and there is a purpose for this cable which you will soon understand. So that cable is not connected anywhere. Also note uh, again that we are only using one battery in this experiment because the capacitor as I mentioned before can only take a maximum voltage of 1.5 volt. Okay. So first I have now connected the positive of the uh, voltmeter, the, the wireless voltage sensor which is what we're using, you can see it here, the wireless voltage sensor, the positive to the positive of the battery and the negative to the negative of the battery directly. Because we want to find out the maximum voltage uh, that is uh, supplied by the battery. Now in order to do that we have to go to the Pasco capstone, turn it on. Uh, you know how to add the uh, wireless voltage sensor. I'm not going to show that. And now you can see that uh, it is showing a constant uh, voltage of something more than 1.6. We can zoom in to find out how much that is exactly by doing that. You know that. So that's like 1.6. Five, close to six five so it'll, it'll be different for each battery so hit stop and we have got the maximum voltage available now next you got to take the uh, voltage sensor the terminals remove it from directly across the battery and put it across the capacitor like I'm doing now so the positive goes to the other side now we know why because the negative of the battery is on this side, the negative goes here. So the voltage sensor is used to measure the voltage across the capacitor. If you now go back to the procedure, in uh, step 3, you have to press down the switch and hit record and you will see the voltage rising so the voltage rises up as you can see now the capacitor is getting charged and as the charge on the capacitor is increasing the voltage on the capacitor is also increasing 
and we know that the maximum voltage available is around 1.65 volt and it would typically take about 50 seconds to reach that maximum so all this time I'm keeping the switch pressed down as you can see all right so I'm keeping the switch pressed down you can see that the voltage is increasing and this is an exponential curve as you may have noticed and keep the switch pressed down until the voltage becomes constant and that as I said would take about 50 60 even more so it's continuing to rise so I'm holding it there and in step 4 of the procedure if you open the switch the capacitor should remain at its present voltage but there is some leakage through the voltmeter that's why it's decreasing okay in uh, step 5 you got to connect a cable between C5 which I'm doing now and C8 so what you're doing now is you're trying to discharge the capacitor through the resistance so uh, you have to hit record and you can then see how the uh, voltage is decreasing all right uh, the voltage started dropping off from 0 0.4 because it was leaking all that leaking all that time I had it pressed down. But you see that the voltage is decreasing. So this is just for practice. Steps uh, 3 to 5 are just for you to get used to seeing how the uh, capacitor is getting charged and discharged so step number eight we already did charge the capacitor and you can see that and uh, from this graph you got to calculate 0 0.632 times the maximum voltage so the maximum voltage in this case i've added the coordinates tool and pull it to the maximum point and you would directly get the voltage okay so let's move it down so the maximum voltage is 1.492 volt so 0.632 times that maximum is going to give you the voltage v1 and we need that for a reason so in this case 0.632 times 1.492 gives 0.943 volt you got to note that down 0.943 volt which is called v1 next multiply the maximum voltage with 0 0.368 0 0.368 times 1.492 gives 0.549 volt so that is v2 so we have v1 and v2 and you already got familiarized to what uh, is expected in the lab so we are ready to do the actual lab which is number 10 so let's go there so what is important is before you begin doing it you have to discharge the capacitor completely for that you got to connect C5 C5 to C7 very important C5 to C7 I've connected C5 to C7 and momentarily connecting it will do and so now we are sure that the capacitor is completely discharged so to do the lab we first press record and then press down the switch and you see the voltage rising as the capacitor is getting charged and uh, keep it until about 50 to 60 seconds which is what I'm doing now keep the switch pressed down because it actually requires about five times the time constant and the time constant in this case is 10 seconds so five times 10 50 seconds 
and let's hold it till 60 seconds so you can see that the voltage is still rising it's uh, about maximum now and then what you got to do is once it reaches maximum you got to do this quickly when you release switch you have to connect that cable remember the cable from sw2 uh, which was not the other end was not connected take that cable i'm going to release it and i'm going to connect that other end to c5 that is important so I've connected SW2 to C5. So now the capacitor is just discharging. You can see that. So we move that graph so you can see. And make sure that it discharges to about, um, it says, one tenth. So this is already more than one tenth. So we can now stop recording. So we got our graphs now. What is now remaining is the analysis part. Remember, we had already calculated V1 and V2. We're going to find the time taken first for the voltage to rise from 0 to V1. Let's do that. So in order to do that, uh, click on the graph, go to the coordinates tool, which is here. Click on the coordinates tool, add that. And uh, remember that V1 was what? 0.943. So pull this to 0.943 volt, which is uh, right there, 0.943. Come on. 95, 944. That's good enough. And make note of the time, which is 10.200 seconds. So that is called T sub C the charging time. Next, we got to find T sub D, which is the discharge time. And that is the time that it takes for the charge to drop from the maximum to V2. Remember, our V2 was 0.549 volt. So, add uh, the coordinate to another one and uh, pull it to the maximum here so what's the maximum 1.492 just before uh, it started dropping all right and then add one more you could also use the delta tool but just let's add one more and then pull this to 0 0.549 0 0.549 so it's somewhere here 541, 549 volt. So we got the time there. Now, TD is the difference between these two times. So TD in this case would be what? 87.3 minus 75.8, which is 11.5 seconds. So you need T sub C and T sub D. So that is basically how you do the lab. In procedure, uh, step number 12, we have to have two capacitors connected in series. And I'm sure you can follow that from what's given in the diagram. You're adding one more capacitor. But the value of that capacitor as given should be at least half to two times, one half to two times the previous capacitor so that means use something like 150 microfarad or 200 microfarad thereabout both for the series and the parallel connection in step 12 you're doing the series connection in step 13 you're doing the parallel connection and then fill up everything in the table and pay attention to everything that you need to show to get full credit. Thank you. I hope you understood how we do this lab. Thank you. See you on the next one.